Hello and good morning from Bremar Flower Farm located in Ashland, Virginia, which is zone 7B. I'm so excited to come to you today to share something totally different than I have ever done before. So I get the question often, do you grow vegetables? And the question, the answer is yes, some. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I started getting into gardening for growing vegetables, but then quickly found out that my family does not really like vegetables. I love vegetables and I eat most any kind of vegetable, but they don't and we're working on it. But um, I was growing a lot of vegetables and they were going into the compost pile. Um, so I just kind of limit what I grow now. Also, I choose based on what pests I want to deal with um, and which ones that I can handle, which ones drive me nuts. Hello, squash bugs. Like I'm pretty much I'm not sure if I'm going to grow squash anymore because and pumpkins and things like that because squash bugs here there's so much squash bug pressure and I just don't have the capacity to go around and pull their eggs off every day um, it's not something that brings me joy um, so I just decided eh, I don't know if I'm going to grow squash anymore even though it's one of my favorite vegetables but today I wanted to grow sweet potatoes my mom has been asking me for like three plus years to grow sweet potatoes because at Thanksgiving she makes the most fantastic sweet potato casserole you've ever tasted. Um, and she does some sweet potato casserole has marshmallows on top but hers is like this brown sugar crumble kind of like a crumble like on a cook on like a coffee cake on top of the sweet potatoes and it's delicious and kind of like a dessert um, and my kids love it. My husband loves it. He doesn't like sweet potatoes other than my mom's sweet potatoes. So I'm going to try to grow sweet potatoes this year. And so I've already potted up. The best way I think to grow potatoes of any kind are in grow bags because you don't have to dig them out at the end of the season when they're ready to harvest. You just dump them and they're there. You can harvest them very easily. So I have these really cool decorative six gallon grow bags already filled with potting mix. Make sure you get a premium, good quality potting mix because if you spend, like get the cheapest bag, you're not gonna be importing those nutrients into that, into that vegetable that you want and it's not gonna thrive as much. So invest in really good potting mix for your grow bags. These are six gallons and I will link these exact cutie cute ones in the show notes so that you can purchase them off Amazon yourself. So six gallon grow bags, I am going to put one plant per grow bag. Hopefully they are large enough. I have heard mixed reviews whether or not the size is good or not, but it's my first go. I did some research. I chose six gallons per plant and we are going to just test it out and see what happens. So in order to start sweet potatoes, you have to, you can, purchase sweet potato slips from any sort of um, garden supply store, like your local feed store might have slips. You can catalog order them, or you can grow slips yourself. And if you want to grow slips yourself, you are going to go to the grocery store, get an organic, very important, get an organic sweet potato, and then you're going to plant it in the dirt. And then you know, you can plant the whole potato in the dirt, slice it in half, plant it in the dirt. All right. And then it's going to start pushing up leaves. So this one's a great example here. A little piece of sweet potato and there's your sweet potato slip on top. I'll bring it closer for you to see. So sweet potato. And then that's the slip or the plant coming out of it. Once you've done that, you can actually slice that potato, which has already been done here. You're going to slice that potato into individual little plants, and then you can plant them. So I have three different types of sweet potatoes today. I have, I believe this is a white sweet potato, so it's a kind of a light orange. And then I have um, a purple. This is a purple sweet potato. It's got really pretty foliage, a little bit of, these have been cut for like a week and I took a while to plant them. <laughs> so they're ready to go in the ground, in the soil, but um, they had these really pretty purple, like darker foliage. And then I have your 
classic orange sweet potato too. So I'm going to try to grow all of those. And I was looking, I was pulling these apart, and this big old chunk of potato was in there. And it looks like it has another plant coming up. So I'm going to put that in my sixth grow bag and see what happens. And we can watch it together. All right. So grow bags. And then you need tomato cages. Let me grab those. So sweet potatoes are a vining plant. So you're going to need to give some sort of support and some sort of trellising system. So I'm going to pop in a tomato cage in each of my grow bags. I'm putting them in first before they get growing because um, I do not want to accidentally jab the cage through one of the potatoes. That'd be bad, right? Same thing when you're trellising dahlias. Put those, put that support stake in before you plant the tuber so you don't jam your stake through the tuber. If we're doing that. I actually only have five tomato cages, which is fine. Uh, I'll get a pick up another one and see how that one is going to do. I have left about an inch of soil or an inch of space in my grow bag. So there's about an inch of space here at the top and that allows for you to deeply water. So when you go to water these, you're going to fill it up to the rim and that gives you plenty of space and it filters in. Now grow bags, they do require a little more watering than if you have it in the ground. So just be aware of that, but they're great because they're breathable um, and air can come in and out of the side of that bag. All right, so here we go. First attempt at sweet potatoes. They are going to take, I'm going to check on them in September, see how they are doing, and probably leave them in there a bit longer. Just uh, and let those roots, those sweet potatoes, really develop and take off. get as large as possible so we can have our Thanksgiving potatoes grown in-house. How cool would that be? Um, I'm excited to try it this year. See how it goes. This one's a really nice root. Really nice slip. Isn't that cool that you can just buy a grocery store organic sweet potato and then for pretty inexpensively and then get all of these plants out of it? I think that's pretty neat. Saves you some money. Now you also have to leave enough time to cure your sweet potatoes. So after they're grown, if you want them to last all year, you have to treat, do a curing treatment, which is basically keeping it in a hot 80 degree environment, with light, heat, for a ex little bit extended period of time. I can't remember off the top of my head. I took a sweet potato class with the Master Gardeners, the Hanover Master Gardeners, a couple weeks ago. And I can't remember off the top of my head how long you have to cure them, but you know what? If I have a successful harvest, then I will then update you guys and give you the information on how to cure your sweet potatoes. So they're all done. Got them all potted up. They're going to grow on the trellis and they're going to be pretty. And I'm going to put them in a space where I'm going to see them. So I remember to water them. I may have hooked them up to drip irrigation. Not sure yet. We'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, excited to try this new experiment and hope you guys will follow along with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for updates on my sweet potatoes. Have a great day. Goodbye.